So, welcome to our reading of the Ocracidal 7, the, the Thalysia, and I was in the middle of the poem within a poem. This is the poem of Simicidas in response to the poem of Lycidas. And in this part of the poem, Simicidas is praying to um, Pan on behalf of his friend Aratus, who's in love with the youth. And uh, it's a rather strange prayer because, as we saw, he says to Pan, if you will assist in this matter, then may you not suffer too much when the, the, there's not very much meat. And on the other hand, if you refuse, then may you suffer terribly. So he says, may, uh, so if you refuse these things, then being bitten, presumably by an insect, uh, may you scratch all of your skin with your fingernails and may you sleep in nettles. Well, it continues on in this same vein with these last few uh, lines here. I ester edonon men in ores in kaimati meso hebron parapotamon tetramenos enkuthen acto en desterae uh, Pumatoi si para Aethiopesin nomues, no, nomues, Petra hupa blemua in hothen u ketinelos horatos. Uh, now, so it's the the meso kaimati, so in the middle of winter. So the whole sense of, of these few lines here is that. Um, if, if you don't do as I say, in the middle of winter may you be in a very cold place, and in the middle of summer may you be in a very hot place. So in the in the middle of winter, um, may you be, this optative from the verb to be, may you be on the mountains of Edona. Uh, the Edonians inhabited the mountains between Macedonia and Thrace. And so presumably up there in the middle of winter it would be very cold. Tetraminos from Trepo, this is a perfect passive participle, having been turned beside, so turning beside the the river Heb Hebron and or Hebros. Hebros is a river flowing through modern Bulgaria apparently. And again it's going to be a very cold area up here. The Enguth in Arcto the omega for u, this is a genitive, uh, so near to the bear. So the interpretation here is un uncertain. Arcto is the constellation, of course, of the bear, and you do get references to uh, star constellations in Theocritus. So the bear, the Arcto is, uh, is north, and so it, this simply may mean facing north, so near, uh, from near to the bear, that is, towards facing, turn towards the north. So you could take the tetraminos either with the first part or the second part of the line, possibly on further thought it might go with the second part here. So may you be in the middle of winter on the, mount, on the mountains of the Edonians beside the river Hebron, or Hebros, uh, literally facing North, perhaps facing near to the bear, so facing north. Endethere, now that men gets balanced with the debt here, so but in summer, nomuois, again optative, second person, may you look after your flock, may you herd your flock from nomuo uh, beside the Ethiopians, the ones who are farthest away. There are various groups of Ethiopians. This presumably, I think, is the ones referred to that are down south below Egypt. So, so in the winter, may you be up in this cold area, but in the summer, may you herd your flocks beside the Ethiopians who are furthest away. Hupot, notice the accent, so it's referring back. So under the rock of Blemuon, of the, Blem, of the Blemies. Now, Blemuon is a tribe uh, which lived between Meroe and the Red Sea, so it's down in that direction towards Egypt. Hothen Uketinelos Horatos. From whence the Nile no longer is Horatos visible. So where the Nile is no longer visible. So that's his prayer to... Uh, 
um, pan and I think mu much of it I think we're meant to take as tongue in cheek because it's not the usual sort of way that you address um, a God in prayer. Now we get a debt here and the humes is referring we read a few lines later to the erotes, so the loves. So, but you understand the loves, Lepontes, having left uh, the hardu goes with nama. This is a neuter noun uh, for nama, meaning a stream. It's connected with neo, I think. So, having left the sweet stream of hiatus and Biblis, and, well, Oikunta, and the, that, um, this, is in, this is in opposition to this, so which is the steep seat, literally, of fair-haired Dione. Now, these places are somewhat obscure. Um, the uh, hiatus is otherwise unknown. Biblis, is a spring located by Pausanias in that's being in Miletus. Oikunta was a was a Carian town in Caria, not far from Miletus, founded by the father of Biblis. And Dione, of course, was the mother of Aphrodite, sometimes identified with Aphrodite herself. And perhaps that's meant to be the sense here, but traditionally she was the mother of Aphrodite uh, in Bion's beautiful um, lament to Adonis the name Dione occurs there and there it's pretty clear that she's being identified with Aphrodite and that may be the case here I'm not sure so the, the steep seat of a beautiful haired or of, sorry of, of blonde perhaps golden haired Dione so may you and then finally we get the um, the rest of the prayer. Uh, so, O Arotes, O Loves, Homoioi, you who are like to Maloisi from Maloisi to Apples. And this is a participle from er Erutho is to stain red or to make red. So, reddened apples, perhaps we'd say. So, but you, O oh loves, you who are like to reddened apples, and we get an imperative finally, here's our main verb, balete, the moi is epic dative, so it's like please. So, please strike the himerontes philinon. This is this philinus, the one that the youth that Aratus is in love with. Uh, himerontes beautiful, it's got that sense of desirable, desired. So may you strike with your bows the beautiful Philinus, and then it emphasized again by, by repetition, Balates, strike him. Since ton xenon hot dusmeros uk ele mu, since the ill-fated one, this wretched one, that is Philinus, uh, does not have pity from eleo on my friend, on the friend mu, meo for mu, for move of me, genitive. So it seems here that the poet is saying, is praying to the loves to force Philenus himself to fall in love with somebody uh, to suffer the pains of requited love because he is not showing any pity upon my Xenon, my guest friend, my friend. Xenos can mean a stranger, but it also has that double meaning of a friend or guest friend, which I think it does here. Kaidan, and this next little bit's again rather sarcastic, uh, because in, in this next bit he intimates that uh, Felinus is getting older and starting to lose his looks. Kai de man for main apioyo pepai teros. And so th this we take together. So in, in fact, indeed, it's almost you are understood. P 
Pepiteros, this is an irregular comparison, an irregular comparative from Pepon. Pepon is a word meaning ripe, and this is a, um, ir an ir irregular comparative from Pepon. It's a third declension adjective. So, um, indeed, he is perhaps, or you are, or he is riper. This is a genitive of comparison here uh, from apion, which means a pear. So, he, he is indeed riper than a pear. Uh, hi, dear Gunaikes, and the women, I, I, Fanti, so Fanti from Femi, uh, it's like Facey here. <coughs> the women say, I, I, alas, Philinos, O Philinus, totoi kelonanthos apore. This is from apo plus reo to flow. So it's literally, and the top goes with the anthos, your beautiful flower for you is flowing away, literally. Perhaps translate this as dissipates. So it's the, your beautiful flower is dissipating, or the flower of your beauty is dissipating. You're no longer as good looking as you used to be. The next little section here, we're meant to, who, it's not clear who the subject, who the we are in here. This is, uh, again, uh, it's very condensed. It's, uh, I think, trying to re reflect here or, or to, to reference the performing the performance of a komos. We, we see this elsewhere in Greek and it's elsewhere in other theocrity and poems of where young youths would, um, if someone was in love with someone else, then groups of youths would go together with the lover to the house of the beloved and they'd normally go after having had a fair bit to drink and they would go in the dead of night or in the early morning and they would stand outside the person's house and they would well, throw love apples at the house, at the windows, or sing to them and try and cajole them to come forth. It was called a komos. We get a reference to one of, example of one of these in one of the other poems of Theocritus. I think it's Idol 3. Uh, and so this section here it is very obscure as to who the we are. But I'll just translate it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Meketi toy fru rio mez. This is from uh, fru reo, and this is the uh, mez for men. And this is a hortatory subjunctive. So let us uh, no longer, uh, indeed, let us no longer keep guard epiprothuroisi. This is the area in front of the door, hence the porch. So let us no longer, Aratus, keep watch upon the porch, plural for singular, medi podas tribomes, nor no longer, sorry, nor let us wear out our feet. So this must be here the friends of Aratus who go with him to perform this komos, to perform this singing of a love song at the door. And they've had enough, they don't want to do it anymore. And they say, Hode uh, orthrios alon, elector, kokuzdon narkaisin aniaraisin didoye. And the now the elector is the rooster, and orthrios is the one who is there in the early morning. So let the early morning rooster, may he give, perhaps hand over, and then we, we'll get a participle too, by the way, here. Kokuzdon, which is onomatopoetic, simply means crowing. So may the the uh, the rooster in the early morning crowing, may he give another, in other words, may he hand over somebody else to narkaisin and niaroisi, to numbing pains. Uh, so perhaps to numbing pains or to painful stiffness or something. Numbing pains, I think, is what Gao says, and it's quite a useful translation there. In other words, you know, they've been up drinking all night and then they're going out into the cold, going to this person's house, having to stand there and sing a song. 
and then the early morning rooster crows and so they simply say you know let let the early morning uh, rooster hand over somebody else to with its crowing uh, to these numbing pains again equally obscure and difficult is this line 125 Hace dapotas de feris de molon and coito palaistras. Now, the, one of the motifs of love, one of the metaphors of love, is that idea of wrestling, of two lovers wrestling with each other, one fighting against the other. And uh, this uh, is a difficult line. Uh, the hace here is like monos, I think. So let, and Molone is a, just a person. Molone's a name that occurs elsewhere in Theocritus, and he's always the, the a wrestler, or one who looks after the wrestling school in one of the other poems. So there may have been a Molone who was well known as being in charge of the wrestling school. So it's something, we get an optative, ankoito, from anko, uh, which means to throttle or to strangle someone or to perhaps fight. Uh, so the t taking haste is like monos. So let Molone alone, let him be throttled, because this is a pass optative passive here. So let him be throttled. Now it's apo uh, from these, well perhaps in that Palaistra in that wrestling school. So from literally from that wrestling school. So um, <clears throat> just to translate it, let Molone alone, um, Ferris de my dear man, be throttled, we might say, in that wrestling school. That is the wrestling school of love. So let the only person who's throttled in a wrestling school, let it be Molone, i.e. not you. So the, the, the poet here is telling Aratus to give up on the youth. He's not, he's a waste of time. The last two lines, Amin de hasukia te meloi, graia te pariae, hatis epi thudzoisa ta me kala nosvin erukoi. Again, very strange lines and referencing back to some kind of rustic superstition. Hezukia, very important word, it's Hezukia in Attic. Uh, it, it means tranquility. And you remember that, that Likidas's poem ended with, uh, with him in a sense, he had, he had reached Hezukia, he'd reached tranquility. He's sitting there drinking eating roasted beans in this beautiful rustic setting. He, he had managed to escape the pain of love and he was experiencing this rustic haze of care. And so this poem here ends, well, initially in the same way. It said, uh, let haze of care be, a, may it be a concern to us. Uh, so meloi is from mello to be a concern for. Generally, you see it in personally in melee. Uh, this is an optative of wish. So may tranquility be our concern. And then we get this very strange line here. Greya, uh, Greya is an old woman and an old crone. And this is optative from Paramy. So let an old crone be present. Hartis for hatis. The very one who, epi uh, this is oisa for usa, it's a participle here. The verb means to spit upon, or spit perhaps in the direction of. And it was a way of averting evil. So you often said, in, if someone said something bad, you would say, I spit it away. And it was a way of averting evil from away from you keeping Nemesis at bay by spitting it away. And I think that's possibly what the sense is. Um, so, may an old woman be present who, having spat in our direction, or spitting in our direction, 
Erukoi, another optative of wish. Uh, Eruko uh, is to um, well to detain or keep away. So keep away nospin separate. Tot te kala that which is not good. So may there be an old woman who, having spat in our direction, might keep away that which is not kala, that which is not lovely. And that's the end of his poem. It's a strange poem, and it one which probably operates on numerous different levels, and one which I'm not quite sure the commentators have really done um, complete expositions of, at least none that I find particularly satisfying, but that's the end of that poem within the poem. And then in the next bit we're going to return back to the to Likidas and Simikidas uh, and what happens to them after they have finished their two poems.